What's up everybody? What you just watched was a same day shoot and edit produced for The Fittest Experience, uh, an event here in Austin, Texas. We had a team of three for this shoot, my buddies Greg and Brett, so big thanks to them for coming out and crushing it. I was the editor on the Saturday edit and Greg actually did Sunday, so huge thanks to those guys. They say a good magician never reveals his secrets, but that's why I'm not a magician. I'm just a guy who sits in the dark alone behind a computer for hours upon end to try to make things look cool and then show you guys. A couple of guidelines to help you guys along. And this is a semi-advanced uh, tutorial in Premiere, so I'm gonna move fairly quickly. Always happy to answer questions, and there's no such thing as a stupid question. Just stupid people. I'm kidding, where am I? We're gonna be doing another video later on that's very same day edit specific. But this one will more cover how we went about shooting and editing the video itself. So let's get into it. I think the best way we will go about this is the order that I usually do it. So I actually do basic edit, my color, and then my sound design, and uh, besides the main track. I knew I kind of wanted to have hard-hitting, uh, fast intro to get people excited about it. Um, people scroll through videos so fast these days that you kind of need something attention-grabbing right to start. So that was my thought process behind that. Make a quick intro that was fast-paced, high-powered. All we wanted was a couple clips that were kind of establishing shots here, and then some motion. You know, motion is kind of attention-grabbing, so that's what we kind of went for here. So we got girls walking up, we got signage. Um, and then the hyperlapse, we're definitely going to do a hyperlapse tutorial in the future, but this is fairly simple. If you look here, the outside, kind of like blown out white space, with my grid and my camera, um, these are all still photos, I just, one photo, two steps, one photo, two steps. Putting this in exactly the center of my frame. So, once you warp stabilize that out, it looks something more like this. And, if you don't have warp stabilizer, it looks something like this. So obviously I'm not perfect. Warp stabilizer on top, and then actually you bring that down to just 10%, so just a little bit. If you shoot these right, and then apply just a little bit of stabilization, they usually smooth out pretty well, and especially if you speed them up later on in post, then they will look really smooth. So I believe we doubled the speed on this one. So imported into Premiere, nested, applied a warp stabilizer, I think nested again because you can't speed it up. And then we doubled the speed um, just for the sake of, I think there was like one beat on the edits. Uh, so we actually keyframe zoomed. So we cut, cut this clip right here and then we keyframe zoomed into that white space there. So you got the hyperlapse and we cut where we wanted to start to zoom in to give more motion. And I knew that white space could be something masked out into signage, into the next shot. Always kind of thinking once you throw the clips into the timeline, what can be seamless for your viewer? Because that's your goal, right? Is to be as seamless as possible. You don't want people to notice the, the edit. You know, there's a lot of slap on transitions that are fun, they can do the job, but you can create something that's technically your own um, really simply by just playing around with keyframes and just looking at your clips and kind of seeing, visualizing cool ways to move one shot into the next. So I saw this kind of blown out spot. I knew it was rectangular, so basically all we did was drew a mask. We did a mask there. Two frames later, I drew it again with these keyframes. So if you mask path right here, what we did to kind of ease out the uh, out outer scene, we actually threw a little bit of a, a wipe so it's actually a little bit of kind of a softer luma fade and it's just kind of dissolving away so again i'm not going to get super detailed into each section because i think this could be a 45 minute video if we do so just to give you a brief idea i just kind of de decided to dissolve it out and it happens so fast you don't really notice but let's play it back again so it kind of dissolves out there full speed right there's enough difference there to make it smooth we got white space okay we got the poster in that white space and then the exterior kind of fades away into the next shot. Now this banner is not on the screen for very long. If we watch at full speed, it almost gets wiped away immediately, but you do get an idea of what we're looking at here. It's their logo with 2019 to kind of place it into this year since they do this event every year. And actually in the original shot, static shot of this poster for establishment and lucky enough, somebody decided, screw your video, I'm just gonna walk right in front of your camera and screw you back, I ended up using it. Just kidding. I encourage people to walk in front because you never know, you can use interesting wipes and, and that sort of thing. Almost exactly the same as this mask with right here. What we did was, as soon as she came fully into frame, 
you just kind of draw around her, clicking and clicking and kind of trying to get it semi-accurate to the shape of the body. And you always want to feather out that mask because if you look here, that hard line, very noticeable, right? It's a CrossFit event, she's probably ripped, but we want to feather that to make it smooth as she walks across the screen and lead into the next clip. Almost every frame, if you look up here at the keyframes, um, I drew a new, new shape because obviously her arm's going to keep moving into different shapes. So you just want to pull that existing mask. You can just go frame by frame here, draw it out until she disappears from frame, and voila, you just revealed your next clip. Here's the next clip. Let's just go clip by clip. Man, we are three seconds in. I wonder how long this video is. Next clip is another hyperlapse, and simply enough, this is just a straightforward hyperlapse. Let's watch the raw clip. Um, so same exact thing. I think what our focus point was, I picked the smallest focus point possible. So again, all still photos, just walking straight. Love to shoot them handheld, all still photos. Pick a point, put it in the exact center, and then hope that my hands are steady and pray for the best. I believe one of the corners of the E here was my point for reference. So this is actually reversed. So I started right up here focusing on that E. And if you actually watch this, I'll play it one more time. Watch this E right here. I know it's kind of small, um, but it will, it should never move in the frame if you do it right, obviously, because that's your reference point, right? So that one's pretty shaky, but it gets the job done because same thing, a 10% warp stabilizer on it. And we kept the center point in the center just enough to make it work and it smooths it out pretty nicely. Um, one thing we did here just to add a little bit more dynamic motion, um, we actually zoomed in, started it a little more zoomed in. So one, the first thing is we reversed it, right? Because it's, it actually started this way, in to out. So we reversed the clip. I think you have to nest it again first before you do all this. So uh, we reversed it, laid it under the, the mask of the lady walking by, and then added a little bit of a rotation. So it's zoomed in, we're zooming out as we rotate towards even, center. And then we again keyframe zoom in here. So this is 100% um, scale right here. And then we start to zoom all the way up to almost like 350%, which obviously is a little bit blurry, but we're going so fast, it just provides more motion to kind of show you this is the fittest experience and the logo's popping on. We're good to go. Uh, last thing, then we'll watch it all back. So we threw the logo on, here they are. Boom, so from zoom out to in, and then with the lion roar, let's listen. Nice. We zoom from out to in. This is a little uh, preset I have that just saves time that I don't have to zoom it out to in myself. Motion animator, I believe these are presets from Motion Array, big fan of those from out to in, and we actually separated it. So this on top is actually, all we did was just draw a mask around the lion head, and then we drew a mask around the TFX logo to actually make them two separate layers so that we could just animate the lion and then add a little sound effect. So all that is is the whole thing zoomed out and zoomed in. Remember, lion's on top, TFX is on bottom. Um, have a little, another shaker um, preset from Motion Array that just kind of gives a nice little shaking animation just to add to the, the lion action. So again, I didn't have to do any of that custom other than kind of playing with the pull tabs and we faded them both out. So let's watch it all back. And we are six seconds into the 60 second edit. Are you having fun so far? I'm sweating. It's a lot faster to edit than to actually describe. So the more you kind of play around with it, the more this comes naturally. Establishment shots of the actual event. We knew we wanted to have some dramatic imagery because we picked out this song ahead of time to kind of fit that. So what caters to that? It's kind of a slower pace. So we knew we wanted some slow motion. So I think our team exclusively shot in either 60 or 120 frames because these people are moving heavy weights and it looks even cooler when you slow it down. So we have like six clips in a row that are just 20% speed, shot at 120 frames with just dips to black to kind of give that movie trailer dramatic vibe. We will move on until we do something kind of unique to the clip. So 20% slow-mo, wow, that's a lot of weight. I'm never going to power clean 315, but this guy is and I'm there to capture it. Um, a little establishment, it rained a lot that night, slow things down and you never know what you're gonna get. 
They had a cool little warm-up area with a tarp that was kind of, the sun was still just coming up, so it was throwing some interesting shadows. So it's kind of the fun part about these run and gun events. You don't plan for a lot of the shots, but you show up, look around, and point your camera in interesting directions, and sometimes good things happen. So especially if you shoot in high frame rate, because then you just slow it down. It looks so sick. Jacked guy, shadow, sun, establishment. About to lift up her barbell. Just to match the kind of mood and the big uh, bass hits, sometimes we'll go, I think all this is, is 100 speed, so full speed, and then it slows down as soon as her foot hits. So 100 speed, and then uh, 40. And that's faded out into girls cheering for her, nothing special. It's always more dramatic to add a little bit of a zoom in, so all we did there was keyframe the scale and the position. This is the original shot, and we just keyed it in towards her face and her friend cheering for her as she celebrates. Same thing here, um, as she dropped this huge barbell, um, we actually started it zoomed in just a little bit, 120, 120 uh, scale, and then just zoomed out as soon as that uh, weight smacked on her shoulders. All of that is in 40% speed as well, so all slow-mo. Sorry, I'm like a serial clicker here. I watch things and go fast, so press pause if you need me to slow down. So this guy here, a lot of these are exactly the same um, length to hit the beats. Even if they don't know it as viewers, they really vibe with the anticipation of the next clip and things hitting on the beat. So if you wanna show this full bag throw from the ground all the way to his shoulder, sometimes you'll have to kind of make some dramatic like motion changes to kind of fit it all in. Otherwise, you only see half of it. And I think it's cool to kind of see the complete like how heavy this thing is, picking it up, throwing it over your shoulder. So this right here, time remapping. So we time remapped this clip. I believe we probably started all of the clips at um, 40%. That length of slowdown clip wouldn't show the whole thing. So if you right click onto the little tiny FX button here, you get motion, opacity, or time remapping. So you can change what this little line is. Usually it's opacity. So if I drag it down, see it's, it's opaque, it's dark. But I can change that if I go right click, time remap speed, and so let's, let's test this for a second. I'm just gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna hold Command on a Mac, Command click to get these little uh, lines up. And then what you wanna do is, say I'm trying to go from slower to faster in a smooth pace. I'm gonna pull this clip all the way to the right. So this is kind of where it's ramping and I'm gonna pull the right side because I want it to go faster. 263, let's go all the way to 400% and then pull it out. So right here is 40%, ramping up smoothly to 400%. Let's see what that looks like. So it's it actually kind of looks interesting. So slow-mo all the way up into super fast motion. And you can play with those tabs, add multiple tabs. Um, it's kind of a fun thing to play with on your own with multiple clips to kind of get a good feel. Speed ramping could have its own video exclusively because um, we use it a lot. Yeah, play around with the tabs. So anyways, this one is a sped up clip to 300% all the way back down to 40. So he picks it up fast from the ground and then it throws over his shoulder in slow motion. There we go. Next clip, people walking in and I think all we did there was, it might've been a little shaky, probably handheld, handheld life. Um, and we did time remap this as well. So I won't get into that because I just showed you how. Speeding up to get the, the guys into the frame and then slowing down to show them running in slow motion slow down and then it actually speeds up again and slows down. So that is multiple. It's a good example of multiple time remaps there. Fast to slow to fast to slow. And it syncs up to the music as well. And then here we go, kind of the next section. So you can see here we cut this song so that um, it, it builds up and then it gets this gets to the kind of the intense part. So if you kind of look, look at how long these clips are on the left during the more dramatic part. And then look at these shortcuts. It kind of uh, caters to the beat. So there's gonna be a lot of high action, high intensity shots, um, and probably more 100% speed or faster. Um, just a little bit less slow motion or more purposefully placed slow motion. So what we got here, this is dipping up from black. Brett got this clip of this guy on the frog. It's a really, really difficult thing to move. So the original clip is him kind of struggling. Brett zooms out to get out of the way of the of the frog, but it adds so much cool motion. I saw it static to a lot of movements. It plays in well. Let's listen to the edit. As those strings fade out, he's kind of motionless, waiting, and then 
As Brett zooms out, I did add a little bit of a uh, shake to just give it some more drama. Let's maybe watch this entire uh, section of music. Let's go over that section. So a lot of these are just kind of matching interesting movements. So gave a little more tilt to this to kind of give the viewer um, a sense of the amount of balance these guys are going through. They're doing pistol squats until can't feel their legs anymore. So we're trying to show, I think we just zoomed in and added a little bit of in-camera tilt. We started at 100 scale and then ended at 110 scale. So that clip. This is my favorite. So you get this really cool blur with the judge more in focus. Let's play it all the way through one time to watch it. So all that is is a full speed clip and then we got a 250% clip. And my favorite little shortcut on all things faster than 100% speed is to pull up um, its command or control R for clip speed duration to add some motion blur anytime you have anything faster than 100%. Always set to frame sampling, drop it down to frame blending. So if you see frame sampling, we get the normal clip. And then once we move it to frame blending, it just adds motion blur. So people have asked about this clip and it's actually as simple as it gets. Orbiting around a center focus and then um, motion blurring the background just by dropping frame blend on it. So next clip, handstand like hard cuts. There you go. One, two, three, four, and then into David Goggins here, so he gets a feature of a couple clips in a row. 40% speed into 250 just to give more push in. So it's like establishing, showing who it is, and then it's pushing in because the next shot is going to be closer. Slow motion, fast motion, pairing with slow motion. Two clips cut four times of David Goggins. Slow, fast, slow, fast. Um, one's a wider shot, one's a tighter shot. And that motion kind of caters to the next shot. So it's moving backwards and left. This is what we think about, I think about a lot is how the motion may play into the next clip. So it's pulling out and almost like turning to the left a little bit. Um, and the next one is kind of just panning left with some foreground plants blurry. So they kind of match up if you play them fast. And again, same thing, this was done on purpose at a faster speed to kind of give more of that motion. And it kind of more seamlessly uh, blends together. So versus it all being in slow motion. So slow to fast, right into her clip. Let's go last two clips, same thing, orbiting around the judge and then orbiting around a drone shot. So if you look at these, a lot of their motions aren't exact, but almost all of them are going a similar route. So a lot of them are either pushing in, pulling out, or when they're panning, I think there's a lot of panning left. So let's watch these through and notice this time with your eye that they're either rotating or um, spinning, orbiting left, just so that they all match up. So all these kind of look easy on the eye in transition. There's no transitions on these, right? You know, you don't always need transitions, especially in a same day edit. We have no transitions, but they all pair together well, just because one, we have a dope team, but two, the selects all move in the same direction. So they kind of just play together seamlessly without you noticing. They're all just hard cuts. It does seem a little bit complicated, all this pre-planning, but um, I'd take too much credit if I said there was pre-planning going into it. Once we throw clips in the timeline, that's where you kind of see it all come together. So that's the beauty of the run and gun is that you shoot a lot of cool stuff. Just try to get some money shots and some similar type of motion. And then sometimes they pair well together. It's transitioned to outside now. So the next clip makes sense outside zooming away from the facility out towards the run that was happening next. So, so we got a drone shot. I think we cut it a few times. All we did was because it's in 4K, we have the ability to zoom in more and not lose the resolution. 100% speed, 500, 2000, and a really weird 8000 speed. Just the first clip is being zoomed out. The rest is just the drone flying away. Props to Greg for getting this shot. And you can see that motion blur again. All we did was frame blended the last one because the frame blending motion blur um, when you're watching it in full speed really just blends naturally with the next shot, which we zoomed out manually. So let's get into that. So we got zoom out, zoom out. If you watch at full speed, pretty smooth, right? It almost looks like one of those dope transition presets you throw on, but it's not. It's super simple. Without it, it just looks like this. Zoom out and then the next clip. I knew I wanted to kind of smooth that out and have it zoom out into these ladies running. So we threw an adjustment layer on top and 
my new favorite little tool, you would go to transform and throw distort transform on there. So transform gives you a lot of options. Instead of applying to the actual clip, you can throw an adjustment layer on top. Um, say you wanted to do a move to two different clips, instead of having to manually change each one, you could throw an adjustment layer and it, the transform would affect everything under it at the same time. So I'm gonna throw this on top, knowing I wanted to zoom it out. Starts at a scale of 200 and then ends up going at this front key back to normal. Um, the only thing different about that is played with the curves a little bit to kind of ease it in, kind of like smoothly goes out, but it's also fast, it doesn't really matter. To get that natural motion blur, if you throw a 180 shutter angle on it, a natural motion blur to any move that you end up making. So that's a nice little uh, effect. Transform, zoom out with the scale tool and shutter angle 180, and then we get a smooth transition. Next clip, more running. Greg did a good job with this tight shot, getting some interesting foreground blur with a super compressed lens at 200 millimeters that um, all brings it into focus there. Same thing with the speed ramp. A lot of what we do for fitness and you know high action stuff is kind of point the camera and follow a specific object, especially when you're shooting tight. So I think the raw clip, it was probably just a bunch of tries. All three of us do this pretty well, of us trying to follow the dumbbells. So that's in slow motion, but just the camera tilting up, trying to keep it in the exact same place. Sometimes you have to do it 10 times, but then you pull it into the editor and then you find the best part. And then all we did was go 150 speed down to slow motion once you got to the top. Boom. Next one is um, legs in a similar place in the frame. So the viewer's eye is kind of going, not having to like jump around, it's natural. Um, and then a handstand. So another tight shot and another example of 100 speed to 40. So a little speed ramp. Boom. And then we actually speed ramped again once she got on the ground to show what she was doing to back to 100. And I lied one more time, <laughs> down to 40. We do a lot of speed ramping if you didn't notice. Fast to slow, fast to slow. And then that slow, so what I tried to do here, um, instead of just showing this regular uh, kind of wider shot of the ladies running, which is a cool shot on its own, um, I kind of went overboard to try to match, again, where her arm was in the frame to where this leg was. So it's not the smoothest transition from zooming out. At least the viewer is looking for sure. They're not gonna be looking over here, right? They're gonna be looking at what's in focus in the frame. So the next clip is gonna start exactly there with a leg and the legs are almost in the exact same position. So just something subconscious to think about when you're editing. There you go, it zooms out, shows the ladies running. And again, something's kind of moving. We're panning just across the screen. So it kind of pairs well with this next orbiting Hyperlapse, so won't get too much into the hyperlapse because we're gonna do a video on just those, but um, we kept these speakers in focus at the top of the frame. Warp stabilized it, it's not the most stable clip because this was a tough one to shoot handheld. And then you see these little uh, tabs here, so we speed ramped it, of course. Going all the way around, and there we go. We actually spun it backwards, so I actually copied and then pasted and then reversed it and then sped it up super fast. So that's actually what I did there. So that it was moving back to the right because the next clip is fans cheering as I'm panning to the right. And to make that all more seamless, it is, what do you know, a time remap. 250 speed down to another slow-mo shot. So if you watch it all, it's gonna be um, fast into reversed even faster into fast, slow so slow fast fast slow and then at the tail end of this one again we sped it back up just to give some more motion next one straight forward just some clips of people cheering and then we needed to really establish and show how difficult this event is look at that guy this clip was cool so same thing here what do you know 100 percent 40 percent at the bottom and 100 percent we probably kind of chose the slower clips when he was kind of going through that that struggle motion. So the actual tough part of the rep, right, is coming up from the squat. So something small to think about. We slowed down that come up and then sped it back up as he gets to the top. And look at that. He matches exactly where in the spot in the frame where the next clip is happening. Next interesting clip. This one's cool. Again, didn't have to leave Premiere for this one. This entire edit, by the way, didn't have to leave Premiere. My favorite thing. And let's look at the original clip. Greg had this cool idea 
to just get some profile shots of some athletes looking straight up. Very shallow depth of field just to get her face to pop out and it's shot very wide so it's kind of like that interesting dynamic look. Um, I threw on what we call a lens distortion here. So lens distortion. This is a cool one to, you can do a lot of different things. I'll just go over what, what I did here and give you some ideas for future. So you throw that on, boom, and we masked it. So without this mask here, she looks like an alien and that's not fair to her. So I knew I wanted to give some sort of trippy vibe to this to kind of give it some more intensity. So it's both zooming out and has this little lens distortion on it. So number one, you throw the lens distortion on and we don't actually have to have this mask on yet. Um, and all we did was actually just keyframe what, this curvature right here. So it actually just curves the lens to kind of warp it. So if you did a positive number, it actually bubbles it. And then if you do a negative number, it just pulls it. So again, it's gonna pull everything in your frame minus what's exactly in the middle. So what you wanna do is mask if you have something that you need to keep <laughs> in a normal shape. And then it's a super big feather. So we expanded the mask. Um, it just started, a, you know, basic around her head, drew a circle, feathered it out hard so that it's like otherwise kind of noticeable. Look at that. It looks like she's in a mirror. Feathered it. Curvature goes from about negative 50 back down to normal. And it's zooming out so it's like a believable move even though Greg just, I think Greg basically just stood there straight up. But it's going from 120 scale back to normal. So if you watch at full speed. Zooming out with some kind of warping on the edges to kind of give it that trippy look. Boom. And then again, once it gets back to normal, Greg did move back. And I just sped it up to give it more of a motion of him moving even farther back. It's like a shaky shot, but done fast. It kind of just gives it, adds to that trippy vibe. Into some celebration, which, what do you know? 100 speed, 40 speed. We speed ramped it as the music is starting to fade out. And then we got a little exit shot. So all this is right here is a cool shot by Brett um, with the exact same logo you saw at the start. Just saw this rope in focus and decided let's make a mask on it. Um, and if you look, again, we did the same day so it's not perfect. The lion head here is, is laying over the rope. So you go here on the clip. So we nested it a couple of times. So the clip here on its own, just a slow-mo clip of the rope swinging, which is really cool. But we threw the logo on top and drew a mask. So all you have to do is draw a shape around the rope. So right here, it's kind of a rough rough sketch around that rope. Um, not much feather because you, do, you, you don't want there to be blur on that one. You want it to kind of be a harder line. And then you'll notice here, multiple keyframes. So the next time I drew was right here, the next time right here. So the rope is kind of revealing the lion's head. And there you go. So full speed, the mask just kind of expands as the rope swings. You know, we did a speed ramp again of this rope. So it goes from slow to kind of fast, back to slow motion. What we did was we nested all of that together to make the logo pop even more. Additionally, we added a little blur to the original shot. So you can kind of, you can see the logo fairly well, of course, but then you throw a blur on there. Here's the original. It just kind of adds to the, the three-dimensional look of the logo. So we, we threw a, bl a blur on the background, nested it all so that we could have some zooming to give it some more, more motion. So started it. 110 scale and then just zoomed it out and then threw a little uh, jiggle on there at the end to kind of play with the music and throw our own logo on there. Woo. And that's everything for 60 seconds of video. So if you stuck around for the whole thing, props to you and thank you for watching. I've been really into teaching, sharing what we're up to this year, a mentorship program, and we're actually hosting a July five day all inclusive creative camp. So if you liked this, we'd love for you to check it out. It's in the link below. Otherwise, any other questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, hit me up, um, find me below. And if you've watched all of this video and you're not subscribed yet, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, let me know what you think and we'll see you in the next one.